recording. We'll get going. Uh, SEMO coach uh, Tom Matukowicz, the Red Hawks, uh, fell in double overtime to Austin P last week. Um, this week they'll be at uh, eighth ring Jacksonville State. So, coach, just a little bit on your team, and uh, then we'll go to some questions. Yeah, just, you know, congratulate Austin P and their coaches and players. And it was an unbelievable game. I mean, it was big swings and dramatic endings. And um, so hats off to those guys. Um, uh, and now, you know, we got to turn the page and, and uh, certainly feel like we could play well. We didn't play bad. We played better than we played versus Murray. And so that's leaves me encouraged and getting ready to uh, go take on Jacksonville State, which, um, you know, is just, you know, it's fun. Get to go compete against those guys. They're always year in, year out. They're the program at base chasing. And so, um, you know, I'm excited about the opportunity. Let's go to uh, Tom Davis first. Go ahead, Tom. Hey, Coach. Um, you mentioned Jacksonville State there. Do you view them as kind of a measuring stick? Uh, sure, sure. I mean, when you get, when I got here, they were the program. And so even our recruiting models are, you know, saying you've got to try to, if you, if you can chase them, then, uh, and you feel like you're competing well with them, then you should be able to compete well with everybody else. So certainly, um, as a program, we're probably a long ways away from the stadium budget salaries, you know, so I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, but, um, you know, so I, they're hard to compare programs or you know, two different programs, but certainly, um, you know, we, we want to play well against them. What do they do well this year? Uh, they're just tremendous on defense. Uh, they fly around, they hit uh, very aggressive. People haven't been able to run the ball on them very well. Um, I think offensively, you know, they've uh, had a lot of success running the ball. Um, and it seems like they're doing a pretty good job on the turnover margin. Um, so they're just kind of doing what good teams do. You know, I stop the run. They are able to run it. And then they make the big plays off the, off the, the play actions and passes and stuff. I heard someone talking about the spring season. And, and they thought it might be a good idea to move FCS football to the spring permanently so that it captures people's attention. What do you think of that concept? To be honest, I, I kind of like the concept. You know, the world has been searching for a, a spring football league. And uh, I don't know, since I've been alive, there's probably been three and none of them have made it. You already have all the infrastructure there to just handle it with uh, the FCS level of football. Um, the problem you get into a uh, little bit there is, is maybe not solvable. So uh, obviously our kids want to play in the NFL. How do you handle the draft and those type of things? And then you would have to have the money come in because a lot of programs like ourselves count on those money games. So those two big hairy things are there. But it, I was like you, I was kind of intrigued by the idea. Are you glad that there's been a spring season this year? Now that you're halfway through it, are you glad you're playing? And, and are your players happy that they're playing? Yeah, I haven't seen any negatives. Uh, it is a grind. I'm probably thankful it's not 11 and 12 games because, you know, it's like, you know, we got done playing Sunday. We're COVID testing at 6 a.m. on Monday. Like it is, it is a different grind because there's a lot more protocols. There's just a lot more to it. Um, but, you know, personally and, and from what I observed, there's been no negatives. Um, this is a different travel week than what Eastern Illinois was. Uh, I, I, there's no way you're doing same day travel this week. So um, what's, what's the protocols? What's the difference in travel plans this week as compared to Eastern Illinois? Yeah, I just, you know, you got to handle the, the eight hour bus ride. And so that's the biggest difference. And we've never done that this year. So, um, you know, all the protocols, you got to bring another bus, uh, you know, you got to wear a mask on the bus. Meals, when you go eat meals, when we're there, we got to, you know, get a protractor out and make sure we don't cross each other or something. And, you know, it just is what it is. And we'll just do it just like anything else we do. 
All right. Uh, now that you've watched the film of the uh, Austin P game, uh, Andrew Bunch had two quick interceptions, but then he didn't have any more interceptions for the last three quarters, plus the overtimes. Um, evaluate his play kind of post the interceptions. Were you glad how he responded? I mean, I couldn't be any more proud. I mean, both both picks were not bad. I mean, those were, you know, I would say a different problem. Um, so and you probably don't see it, but some of the big hits he took were pretty unbelievable. Uh, but some, you know, obviously we didn't get any late hit on the quarterback, but he took some some bad ones and responded. I don't know if you remember the third and one. We had a run call. He had the uh, – and we do a lot of run pass options, obviously, but uh, he had the confidence and, and to be able to, to throw the fade to Johnny. I thought that was just a big moment for a football team to believe, and he believed in himself and his teammates. Uh, is Gino a good blocking back? No. Okay, all right. So that's an area he needs to get better at. So. Yeah, I think it's a young young guy thing. You know, he obviously physically can do it. I think uh, his effort when he's got the ball in his hand and his effort when he doesn't have the ball in the hand may not look the same, but you know, that's across America. That's just, you know, your red shirt sophomore, I guess, just a part of okay. us teaching them. Is Zion, uh, what's Zion's status this week? Questionable. He won't okay. practice today. Um, so we'll just see. All right. You've got a brand new kicking game this year. You're three or four games into your, you're halfway through your season, really. Um, are you satisfied with the kicking game, seeing how it's all brand new? Yeah, I think what coaches want to see is progress. You know, I know it's not going to look great right away, but I think what keeps me going is I see improvement. So as long as you see improvement, you feel feel good about it. And I think uh, we have, and, uh, you know, Kenny, uh, I don't know if you saw a couple of those kickoffs, one that the guy caught and ran out of bounds at the three. I mean, we, we did some yeah. nice things from a special team standpoint. Okay. All right. That works for me, Coach. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Coach, last last question, then we'll let you go. I know you're focused on yourself, but right now, three weeks in, two teams are three and oh, there's a two and one team, and then you're one of the one and two teams. So everybody's still right there. Just is gonna something's gonna come down to the last week of the season, you think see who the champion's gonna be? Yeah, it, it generally does in the OVC. Uh, it's been a while since there's been an undefeated OVC champion. You probably know that. Um, but uh, you know, that's what makes this conference so fun. Uh, and then just make sure, you know, people just, you know, players got to realize anybody can beat anybody and you got to respect the process of what it takes to play well. And that starts with respecting your opponent. Um, and so uh, I think it just says a lot about the staffs in this conference and the football. Well, coach, we appreciate your time this morning. Best of luck on Sunday and we'll talk to you next Tuesday. I apologize about being late there, Kyle. Thanks for the text. Hey, no, nah, no worries. No worries.